I'm sure that most of us recognize this sound, the dial-up server. It took almost 20 years for that sound to become mainstream, and another five years before we started buying books from this Amazon website. I hope you will both ag all agree that both Amazon and I aged well since 1995. <laughs> The Bitcoin blockchain will be 10 years old at the end of this year, and the Ethereum blockchain only three years old. Yet I guess, for most of us, we've only heard about this technology maybe one or two years ago. This is still very young. Yet, from Zug to Beijing and Sydney to San Francisco, blockchain technology and the cryptocurrencies running on them are all the rage. More than that, it's the ICOs, or the initial coin offerings, the token generating events, the disruptive nature of this technology, the possible bubble, all the news that comes with it, that is slowly making its way into our conversations, our conferences, and our boardrooms. One day, it's people telling us that cryptocurrencies are a fraud, or even worthless, and the next, it is cities like Zug in Switzerland allowing their citizens to pay government services using Bitcoin. It is the old world against the utopian thinkers and everything in between. This narrative has all the elements that make a powerful story. And so we are reminded of the advent of the internet, the disruptive nature of that technology, its bubble and the inevitability of the emergence of companies that forever changed the way we live and work. Where we first had the Internet of Information, we are now moving to the Internet of Value. But I'd like to have a raise of hands. Who here knows what blockchain is? That's a lot. Who owns cryptocurrency? Also, more than I expected. <laughs> Blockchain is the technology that enables us to send money over the internet directly to each other, without the use of a trusted third party like a bank or a payment processor. It is essentially a very large database that lives on hundreds, maybe hundreds of thousands of computers all over its distributed and decentralized network all over the world. This database is open for everyone on, the, on its network to see. Everyone can see who owns what and which transactions are being made, albeit in a cryptographic manner. And because of this cryptography used, you cannot go back and change this record. So it is immutable. You cannot change it. This technology is radically changing how we use money and how we send and store money and digital assets. Because of its many applications, we can already identify five areas where this will be significantly useful in Curaçao and in other Caribbean islands. We can improve cross-border banking. We can make government spending more transparent. We can revolutionize the financial service industry. We can power financial inclusion. And we can create new digital ecosystems. It is reimagining the system, recreating the economy, iterating and experimenting and testing minimal viable projects but it is also considering the moonshot ideas, not improving what we already have, but leaping forward to a new way of doing things. The author of the business blockchain, William Mugayar, recently quoted a quote, I think, at a conference, and he said, the Stone Age did not end because of lack of stones. It ended because new technology came along. And I believe <laughs> that we are in this transitional phase again. 
Should we be worried about internet security and hacking? Yes. Should we be concerned about how our data is being used or misused? Absolutely. Will our workforce need to adjust? Definitely. Will we need an overhaul of our education system to meet the needs of a cryptographic and digital age? Undoubtedly. Is change required right now? I believe so. But Curacao is working on this. We have Bitcoin meetings almost every month. There is a public-private partnership that is working to create a regulatory environment that is blockchain friendly. We have houses being bought and sold for Bitcoin here. And we have classes being taught in the universities and in many companies. We are a blockchain friendly country, but we need to promote the ideas that we can develop and innovate within a regulatory environment. There are many nations competing to be the blockchain jurisdiction at the moment. And in order for us to proceed, we need to foster these ideas. What is important for us to remember is that it is not only the regulators or the government that need to push this forward. It is we as business owners, entrepreneurs, coders, gamers, students and educators, even imagineers, that need to propel these ideas forward, develop and innovate. We need to develop a Curacao and a Caribbean that is ready for an age of virtual reality, artificial intelligence, smart contracts, flying drones, driverless cars, and blockchains and cryptocurrencies. There is still a level playing field out there, but we need to have our skin in the game. So I challenge you. I challenge you not to let this change overcome us. I challenge you to take these technological advances by the proverbial horn and rise with them. Make them better and more impactful than we could have ever imagined. I challenge you to be the one who smashes that box and enables the changes required both today and tomorrow. We can do this. Thank you.